Hi guys, welcome to Math Lesson 80. We are gonna get started again with your measures. These are very, very important for you to know. But before we start with our cards, remember there are two that we don't have cards for. One bushel equals how many pecks? Four, very good. And one peck equals how many quarts? Eight, nicely done. Okay, now let's start with our cards. We're gonna do these a little bit faster because we have so many. One minute equals how many seconds? 60. One leap year equals how many days? 366. One day equals how many hours? 24 hours. One week equals how many days? Seven days. One foot equals how many inches? 12 inches. One meter equals how many centimeters? 100 centimeters. One dozen things equals how many things? 12 things. One pound equals how many ounces? 16 ounces. One year equals how many weeks? About 52. One gallon equals how many quarts? Four quarts. One yard equals how many inches? 36 inches. One mile equals how many feet? 5,280, nice. One year equals how many days? 365, nice. One quart equals how many pints? <clears throat> Two pints. One pint equals how many cups? Two cups. One year equals how many months? 12 months. One yard equals how many feet? Three feet. One hour equals how many minutes? 60 minutes. And one mile equals how many yards? 1,760. Perfect. I hope that you guys are able to get most of those correctly. If there's still a couple that maybe the newer ones, especially you don't always remember, that's okay. We'll just keep practicing. We're going to learn a new measure today. These are kilograms and grams. Just like we have kilometers and uh, kiloliters and things like that. Kil uh, kilo is something that's very, very big compared to whatever is in the middle. So I want you to look at the red box at the top of your page, pages 159 to 160. The, uh, the red box is all about the gram and kilogram, and it says the gram is, much, is a much smaller unit than the ounce. We've already talked about how the ounce is teeny tiny, right? You need 16 of them to get a pound. Well, the gram is even smaller. Oh, it's so, so light. You see there on that blue scale that the ounce is lower because it's heavier and the gram is higher because it's lighter. So if you were to put something that weighs one ounce and something that weighs one gram on a balance, it would go just like that. Now the kilogram, that is way, way larger. It's way larger than a gram. So the kilogram is even larger than the pound. The pound, is um, 16 ounces, remember? So a pound is still not very big. A kilogram is a thousand grams. One kilogram is 1,000 grams. So it's 1,000 of those little teeny tiny things. But when you have a thousand of them, it makes it really heavy. So the pound and a kilogram, if you were to put both of them on a scale, the kilogram would go and the pound would go up. So kilogram, pound. Kilograms are much heavier. And you can see that on the pink scale there. Okay, so our new measure that we're adding is one kilogram equals 
1,000 grams. Let's say that three times together. One kilogram equals 1,000 grams. One kilogram equals 1,000 grams. One kilogram equals 1,000 grams. All right, it's going into the stack. Boom, there it goes. Okay, number one says, write true or false before each of the following. So you have to tell me if what it says is true or false. Number one, letter A. A feather weighs about one gram. What do you think? Is that true? Are feathers very, very, very light or are they more pesado? This is true, true. Most feathers are very, very light. We even have a, a frase in English, light as a feather, meaning it's oh, barely has any peso at all. So that is true. They're about a gram. They're very light. Letter B, a kilogram weighs less than a pound. So a kilogram is menos than a pound. False, remember a kilogram is heavy. Letter C, a person's weight would be measured in grams. No, this is false. Grams are so tiny, you would be depressed if you saw the number of how many grams that you weighed because you'd have to be a lot, like thousands upon thousands of grams. So, nope, we wouldn't weigh in grams. That's too, too small of a unit. Letter D, a ham sandwich would be measured in grams. That's true, a ham sandwich is very light, doesn't, it's not basado at all, so you would, you could use grams to weigh that. Letter E, true or false, Mrs. Sawyer bought five grams of potatoes. Are potatoes light or Pesa. They're very light, so that's false. You wouldn't use grams. Uh, five grams of potatoes? No, it's way, 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 way too light. So that's not even a, a whole potato. Let's move on now to exercise two. It says number the units of measurement in each box from least to greatest. Least, remember, is the smallest, the mas pequeño. Greatest would be the biggest. So in um, the first box, letter A, you have liters, cups, quarts, gallons, and pints. Which one is the smallest of those five? Liters, cups, quarts, gallons, or pints? Well, not liters. Cups are pretty small. We have to have two cups and a pint, two pints and a quart, so is there anything smaller than the cup? Nope, so cup is number one. What comes after cups? Well, there's two cups in a pint. So pints are number two. There's two pints in a quart. So quarts are number three. Now here's where it gets tricky, remember? Quarts and liters and gallons. Which one's um, smaller, the liter or the gallon? Well, there's about two quarts in a liter and four quarts in a gallon. So which one is uh, smaller? The liter. So liter is number four and gallon is number five. Letter B, ounce, kilogram, ton, pound, gram. Okay, well we learned which one was the smallest today. Which one is the smallest? Gram, very good, that's number one. Then there's another one that's teeny tiny, and what is that? Two, the ounce. Ounce is number two, so grams, then ounces. What would come after ounces? You have kilogram, ton, and pound left. Well, kilogram we know is heavier than the pound. Tons are very heavy. You have to have 2,000 pounds to have a ton, so it's not tons. So pounds, pounds are number three. Now, which one is heavier, the kilogram or the ton? 
It's the ton. There are 2,000 pounds in a ton, so they are very heavy. Whoosh. So four would be kilogram and five ton. All right, and I want you to try the last box on your own. Number three says write the answers to the measures. Number four, solve the story problems. The golden delicious apple tree produced 20 kilograms of apples. An empire apple tree produced eight times as much. How many kilograms of empire apples were produced? Okay, so what does the problem tell us? Well, it tells us that the golden delicious apples produced 20 kilograms, but the empire apple tree, eight times as many. So I wanna figure out how many empire apples there were. Well, that word eight times means multiply. So we take our 20 kilograms and we multiply that by eight to find out how many kilograms, that's the abbreviation for kilograms, this tree produced. Letter B, Brielle and her mother made 48 apple tarts for the church picnic. 39 of the tarts were eaten. How many tarts were left? Okay, remember when you have that word left, what is that telling you to do? Subtract, very good. So our problem tells us we started with 48. People ate 39, how many are left? So you start with 48, you take away the 39 that people eat, and your answer is how many tarts were left. Okay, number five, you need to divide and check. Be careful with your remainders. Number six says follow the signs. We're gonna do letters A and D together. Remember, when your um, problem is like this going across, then you need to make sure you're careful to add the correct numbers. So we start with the ones place. So the very first number, the ones place. Five plus eight is 13, very good. Then you carry your one to the tens place. So now we do both numbers in the tens place. So the second place, seven and five. One plus seven is eight. Eight plus five is 13 again. Okay, carry our one now to the hundreds place. One plus two is three. Is there a number in the hundreds place here? No, so we're done there. 333 is your answer. All right, letter uh, D is right below it in your book, 400 minus 63. So for this one, you do the same thing but you have to be careful with subtraction to borrow. So 400 minus 63, I'm going to borrow from my four because I can't subtract three from zero. This is where I'm starting. Is zero minus three, can't do it. I have to borrow. I can't borrow from a zero, there's nothing there, so I have to go all the way over to the four. I borrow one, it becomes three, and this becomes 10. Now I'm not done because I want my, to borrow for this zero. So now I can borrow from here because it's a 10. So it becomes nine. And I bring that one over here. Now I can subtract. 10 minus three is seven. Now I'm going to do the numbers in the tens place. So I have nine minus six is three. Now I have a three here in the hundreds place, but nothing here. So it's like three minus zero, and it is three. Okay, let me know if you need any other help with that, but follow these examples to complete exercise six. Number seven says, write the quotient. So you just need to divide. And your brain booster says, Noah and dad went for a bike ride. They were gone for 35 minutes. If they returned home at 6.50, what time did their bike ride begin? So we know that wherever they started, they were gone for 35 minutes and it went to 650. So subtract 35 minutes from 650 to get the time that they started. 
All right, let me know if you have any questions. I am here for you. Have a wonderful day, guys. I love you so much. Bye.